So moving and rotating this first joint is the optimum way of setting this up. So this is basically where my shoulder is. I think it's a little bit out of position. So I move it to here. I need to move my other joints as well. So I swing back to my perspective and have a closer look at what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> so actually I might just recreate this joint system here. Actually I'll probably just swing around to the top. See if I can correct it first. So control shift and select my object uh, options here. And actually what I can select is my parent. Uh, select should be control shift. Where is it? Uh, local. Okay. The local selected, I can move it a little bit over. And here I'm just going to switch to my so control shift to object itself. It gets rotating this way. So I'm just chuck it into local. Just move it into the wrist area here. So it allows me to move the bones correctly without rotating them, or actually what you call translating them around arbitrarily. So from the perspective viewport, you should get a nice sort of result here. So it should be pretty close to how you originally created it. Of course, if you have it sort of not lined up correctly in the first place, I do suggest that you recreate your joint chain again. It's just easier. Okay, so that should do quite nicely for this setup. So what I'm going to look at doing is creating a spine. Um, but firstly, I'm going to look at doing what's the uh, creating the clavicle. Now the clavicle is a bone which attaches your shoulder uh, to your chest and it attaches at the front here. And this basically sort of creates a sliding uh, capability of your shoulder. So your shoulder can go up and down and forward and backwards and it pivots off this point here. Okay, it's not to be confused with the scapula which is the uh, big bone on the back but the <clears throat> clavicle or known as the collarbone is what we're going to create next. So I'm just going to go into my side of view and I'm just going to create a single bone out here. Okay, go to my front view and move it just off center. So it should be about here. And I'm just going to call it right collar. Oh, sorry, left collar. Okay, and then selecting my shoulder bone first. And in my collarbone, press P on the keyboard to parent it to it. So back to perspective, and you'll see that being nicely created like so. Alright, so I'm going to create the spine now. So switch into my left side view like so. I'm going to start tapping in some bones here for my spine. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to select my hip bone here which you can do by just selecting it and this will enable you to continue this bone chain with the subsequent selection. So I'm just going to create a series up to here and the objective is to hit the base of the neck and I'm going to go ahead and create one neck bone, second neck bone and it's probably going to be the head bone actually and I'll put one at the top of the head here to finish it off. So I've got my hips, I'm going to go up the chain and I'll select the next bone up and I'll call it accordingly, so I'll call the spine 01 and I'm just going to copy that name, control C on the keyboard and just move up the chain and basically just paste and add a number to the end and spine 3 and spine four, and this one's going to be called neck. O one, just copy that as well. Neck O two, and this one I'll just probably move up a little ways, so it should be still on local. Yep. 
move it up fractionally to the base where your atlas is. This can be actually called head or atlas, but I'm just going to call it head for simplicity. And this one I'm just going to move down a little way. I'm just going to call this head end, which effectively can be deleted, but we'll leave it in at this stage. So I'm going to switch back to my perspective to look at what I've got. Okay, so now I need to parent my left collar to my spine 04. So by shift selecting or control shift selecting, I'm just going to hit the P button and parent it across like so. Which will now enable me to mirror across the chain. I can go to my skeleton, to my mirror joint, and check my options like so. But since I'm mirroring across the left in exactly the same fashion as before, I can actually just go ahead and hit my mirror tool straight out of here to get this same effect. Okay, so that's pretty much our bone skeleton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skin my mesh to it. And I'll do that by just selecting the hips or the root. Okay, so basically all your bones should be parented to your hips. That can be easily tested by selecting it and moving it. And you'll see everything moves with it. This is not the case. And it's something else. Like for example, it is uh, coming from here. And for example, that can be easily done by doing what's called a reroute skeleton. And you're down here and you selected it, you'll see some issues. So how do you get it back? Well, just like I did then to set it up, just select what is supposed to be the root of your skeleton. And select skeleton and go reroute to skeleton, which will make that the parent of the, the skeleton itself. Okay, so I'm going to skin the mesh, so selecting skeleton first. I'm going to shift select the uh, mesh itself, and I'm going to hit the smooth bind uh, tool here, which can be tested by just rotating through your joints like so. I'm just going to go to shading to smooth shade all, and you can see the bones through my mesh, and that's because I have switched on x ray joints. So if you don't have that switched on, this is what you'll see. But I have switched on x-ray joints, so I can see my joints like so. So you can see now my animation can be affected like so. Yeah, okay, this should, local should be right. And this is basically what I want to achieve. Alright. So select the skeleton. Let's create a new layer. And call it skeleton. So, all right. So now we're going to set up the skin, which are, oh no, I've already done that. But I'm going to set up some IK now. And to do that, I'm going to use what's called the IK handle here. So selecting the IK handle tool, I'm going to create four kinds of IK: one for each leg and one for each arm. So selecting the upper leg and then the ankle for each one. I'm going to create the IK handle for it. So here I can move my IK handle around and you can see it basically affecting the joint chain. So selecting the IK handle again and doing it again. It's worth noting that if you hit Y on the keyboard it will repeat the last tool you use. It's very handy if you use a tool a lot. So Y on the keyboard just repeats the last tool and you don't have to go and select it each time. So I've created a series of IK handles here. So I'm just going to open up my window outliner to have a look at my handles here. So I'm going to name these as I go now also. So I'm going to call this left leg IK and switch copying that. I'm just going to go right leg IK. This one will be left arm IK and this right um, IK. So everything's named nicely. Okay, so we have a bunch of IK which allows us to affect the arms and legs like so. It's very neat, it's very easy and works quite well.